Now, having looked at the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, let's move on to the restrictive diseases. So these are also known as diffuse interstitial lung diseases. And as you can see from the name, these usually affect the interstitium and the lung. So the alveolar walls, um, the capillary regions, and the area of gas exchange. And they result in decreased lung compliance and also obviously reduced gas exchange because the surface or the membranes through which the gas actually moves become thickened. So we can subdivide these into several types of conditions, the first of which is the fibrosing conditions. And uh, again here among these there are several specific entities, the first of which was briefly mentioned under the idiopathic uh, category of lung diseases, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, this is also known as usual interstitial pneumonia and or UIP. And there is no known cause uh, for this condition, but it eventually results in marked fibrosis and destruction of the lung parenchyma. Now, the next group of conditions would be the pneumoconiosis. Uh, and uh, again, this was already previously discussed under the toxic uh, diseases affecting the lung. And these are usually due to inhaled mineral dusts. Radiation pneumonitis, which is iatrogenic, uh, often due to treatment for tumors around the chest area or mediastinum. And this can give rise to lung damage, which eventually can give rise to fibrosis as well. Uh, the next category of conditions would be the granulomatous uh, inflammatory conditions, chief of which is sarcoidosis. So sarcoidosis is actually a systemic disease, and even though it wasn't mentioned in, in the earlier mind map, it could be classified under the inflammatory conditions. So you can read up about sarcoidosis. It affects lung parenchyma as well as lymph nodes, and it has certain epidemiological features. So often this is a diagnosis of exclusion, and one would have to always exclude infections, particularly TB, if we encounter granulomas in the lung tissue before we diagnose sarcoidosis. The next condition is that uh, which has to do with eosinophils or eosinophilic infiltration, and this includes hypersensitivity pneumonia, also known as extrinsic allergic alveolitis, which we talked about earlier on. And uh, this is actually a hypersensitivity response, which is chiefly types 4 as well as types 3 hypersensitivity reactions. And you can revise this uh, from your chapter on uh, immune conditions or immune-related pathology. Uh, smoking can also give rise to lung damage directly and eventually lead to fibrosis of the lungs. So in these uh, interstitial lung diseases, they are progressive conditions which can eventually lead to end-stage fibrosis of the lung. This gives rise to a honeycomb appearance uh, grossly as well as under the microscope where a lot of the lung architecture is destroyed and replaced by fibrosis. So this is called honeycomb lung. And eventually, both groups of chronic lung diseases, both the obstructive as well as the restrictive lung diseases, can give rise to progressive disease which eventually leads to respiratory failure and um, also can alter the vasculature of the lung because it can affect the lung architecture and give rise to pulmonary hypertension and core pulmonale which if you recall is heart failure as a result of pulmonary hypertension which is often due to chronic lung disease. So in this mind map, this is sort of like a different way of classifying chronic lung disease by the obstructive pattern versus the restrictive, uh, restrictive pattern, which can be ascertained due, uh, using lung function tests. Many of the entities that we've mentioned here have already been briefly touched on in the previous mind map, looking at the different etiologic categories of lung disease. So you can see that this is just a different way to classify lung disease, which may be clinically quite useful because of the lung function test results.